Hello there, friends. It's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and the LoopyLamb.com. And we're back this week with another part of our Amigurumi Advent Calendar crochet along. And this week we're going to be making the bell sleeve dress. To follow along with today's tutorial, you're going to need the following materials. You're going to need a worsted weight yarn of your preference in two different colors. I'm using We Crochet's Bravo worsted weight yarn in the colors Lady Slipper and Freesia. You'll need a three and a half millimeter or E crochet hook or whatever hook that you've been using to match the gauge for the pattern so far, a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, two nine millimeter buttons, and a sewing thread and needle. So if you're ready to get started, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. I'll clear away my workspace here and we'll get ready to start working on our bell sleeve dress. To get started with our dress, we're going to need one of the two yarn colors that we selected for our dress. I have decided to use the lighter color for my trim and we're going to need our crochet hook. To start, we're going to create a slip knot and place it on our hook. Make sure that it's not too tight and you have freedom of movement there on your hook. And you're going to start by creating a chain of 30. To do that, we're going to yarn over hook and pull through the chain on our hook. And that's one. Yarn over and pull through. That's two. And we're going to continue until we have 30. So now that we have our chain of 30, we're ready to start with row one of our dress. To start, we're going to place a single crochet in the seventh chain from the hook. To do that, we never count the yarn on our hook. We're going to start on this chain here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're going to insert our hook into that seventh chain, yarn over, and pick up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. And that's your first single crochet completed. And now we're going to place one single crochet into each remaining chain across. And so I'll show you how to do that single crochet stitch one more time. You're going to insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. Again, there's two loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. That's your second single crochet completed. So we're, and we're going to repeat this all the way across our chain. At the end of this row, you should have 24 single crochet stitches and those skipped six chains at the middle or at the beginning here. And they're going to create a buttonhole later in our garment. So we're uh, not going to count that as a stitch. That's just, we're just going to count that as a chain six loop space. So if you'd like to pause your video and do one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of row one when we're ready to move on to row two. So I just did my last stitch of row one and I'm ready to start with row two. To do that, I'm going to yarn over and pull through the loop on my hook to create a chain one. And then I'm going to turn my work. For row two, we're going to start by placing one single crochet into the uh, each of the first three stitches. So we're going to go into that first stitch and single crochet and into the next two stitches. And in the next stitch, we're going to do a single crochet increase. Now an increase is when you place two single crochets into the same stitch. So we're going to go into that next stitch and single crochet. That's one and single crochet back into that same stitch again. And that's two and that's your increase. And now we're going to repeat this pattern of three single crochet stitches followed by an increase across our row. You should be able to complete this repeat of three stitches followed by an increase a total of six times across. Now we'll, I'll show you that repeat again. So single crochet into the first three stitches followed by an increase, which is again those two single crochets into the same stitch. Now if you'd like to pause your video and work those increases or those uh, stitches across your row. At the end of this row, you should have 30 stitches. And just a reminder not to work into those chains at the end of the row. We're going to stop in the last single crochet and just pretend that that chain six space is not even there. So pause your video and meet me back here when you're ready to start with row three. 
So I'm on my last stitch of row two. And now we should be working a single crochet increase into this last stitch. I've completed my first stitch, but I need to change colors in the next row. So to do that, I'm going to start my single crochet as I normally would by working into the stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop. And now I'm going to put this down and I'm going to grab my other yarn. And so now I have my other yarn and I'm going to lay it over the hook like so. I'm using a slip knot because it makes it more secure while I'm on the camera here. You don't have to do that. You can just lay the yarn over your hook. And then you're going to do the last yarn over of your single crochet with this new color. So you're going to pull that through the stitch and that's your stitch completed. And now you're ready to move on to the next row with your new color. To start with row three, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. To start row three, we're going to place one single crochet into the first and second stitches. So we're going to single crochet into that first stitch, single crochet into the next, and then we're going to place a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So again, that's those two single crochets worked into the same stitch. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. There's one and four. And then we're going to single crochet increase into the next stitch. Now that is the beginning of our pattern. We're going to do four single crochets followed by a single crochet increase four more times. So you're going to repeat that pattern of four single crochets followed by an increase until you have two stitches remaining. And now that I've finished doing my repeats, I have two stitches in the round left to work and I'm going to place one single crochet into each of those stitches. At the end of this row, you should have 36 stitches. And now to start with row four, we're going to chain up one and turn our work. To start for row four, we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first five stitches. And then we'll single crochet increase into the next. Now we'll single crochet into the first five stitches. And single crochet increase into the next. And that is our pattern repeat that we will do across this row, five single crochets followed by an increase all the way to the end of the row. If you'd like to pause your video and meet me back here when you're ready to start row five, I'll finish this up and meet you here. And at the end of this row, you should have 42 single crochet stitches. I just finished my last stitch of row four and I'm ready to move on to row five. To do that, I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. Now for row five, we're gonna start by placing one single crochet into each of the first six stitches. So we're going to one, So now that I have my six single crochets, I'm going to do a chain seven, which is going to create our first armhole. So we're going to yarn over and pull through. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now we're going to skip 10 chains. So we're going to find the first available stitch down here and we're going to count over 10. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now in this 11th stitch, we're going to place a single crochet. Okay. So now that we've placed our first single crochet, we're going to place one single crochet into each of the next nine stitches. And 
And now we're ready to start our second armhole. And to do that, we're going to chain up seven again. And we're going to skip 10 stitches. And now single crochet into that 11th stitch. And then we'll crochet a uh, single crochet once into each of the remaining five stitches. Now at the end of this row, you should have 22 stitches and two chain seven spaces that will become our armholes. And now we're moving on to row six. To do that, we're going to chain up one and turn our work. And for row six, it's very simple. We're going to place one single crochet into each stitch and chain across. So if you'd like to pause your video, meet me back here when you're ready to start with row seven. At the end of row six, you should have 36 single crochet stitches. So I just finished my last stitch of row six and I'm ready to move on to row seven. To do that, I'm going to chain up six before I turn. So I've done my chain six and I'm turning my work. And now I'm going to skip those six chains and I'm going to start working back into the last stitch of the previous row. And I'm going to work one single crochet into that stitch and the next four stitches as well. And as you can see this, we've got that loop again at the beginning of our work and that is creating a second buttonhole. Now that we have our five single crochets, we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat this pattern across our work. Five single crochets followed by an increase stitch. We're going to repeat that a total of six times. So we've done it once already. So we're going to do it five more times. And then at the end of this row, you should have 42 stitches and the chain six loop that we had at the beginning. So if you'd like to pause your video and repeat five single crochets followed by an increased stitch across your row, I'll meet you back here when we're ready to move on to row, row eight. Now we're ready to move on to row eight. To start row eight, we'll chain up one and turn our work. And then we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across. At the end of the row, you should have 42 stitches. And just a reminder that you're not going to be working into that chain six loop at the end of this row. So if you'd like to pause your video and place one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here when we're ready to start with row nine. We just finished with row eight and we're ready to move on to row nine. To do that, we're chaining up one and turning our work. To start row nine, we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. And then we'll work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now we're going to start our pattern repeat for the row. And that's one single crochet into the first six stitches. There's six, followed by a single crochet increase into the next. So we're going to repeat this pattern four more times. We're going to do six single crochet stitches followed by an increased stitch. So once again, we're going to do this repeat four more times six single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. When you're done those repeats, you should have three stitches left to be worked. And if you'd like to pause your video, meet me back there. I'll show you what to do when you get to those last three stitches. So I just finished my last of the pattern repeat and I have three stitches left in this row to work. And now I'm just going to place one single crochet into each of these stitches across. At the end of this row, you should have 48 stitches. Now for rows 10 through 19, they're all worked the same way. We're going to chain up one and turn our work. And we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across. So if you'd like to pause your video here and do rows 10 through 19, I'll meet you back here when we're ready to start with row 20. So I just finished my last stitch of row 19 and I'm ready to move on to row or round 20. For round 20, I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. 
Now for this round, we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across, but at the end of the round, we're going to do something different. And I'm going to show you what that is in just a moment. So if you'd like to pause your video and do this round in uh, one single crochet in each stitch across, meet me back here at the end of the round and I'll show you what we're going to be doing at the end of this round that's different from before. So I just finished my last stitch of round 20. And before I move on to my next round, I need to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. So if this is the way the work is facing you, then you're going to want to grab the other side of the work. So that way you have the same side facing you on the other side here. And then you're going to insert your hook into the first stitch of this round, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then you're gonna pull that loop through the loop that's already on your hook and that is your slip stitch completed. Now at this point, I recommend bringing in a stitch marker to either place in the last stitch or the first stitch of each round. So that way it helps you keep track of the stitches here and distinguish between these first and last stitches and the slip stitch. If it helps you, don't be afraid to use one in both the first and the last stitch because I personally did that for a really long time but, um, and I found it really helpful, but now I've moved on to just using the one in the last stitch, uh, what will be the last stitch of the round. So now I'm ready to move on to round 21 now that I've joined and I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. Now, when we're working uh, with slip stitches, we're never going to count those in our stitch count. We're not going to work into those slip stitches. We're always going to start in the last stitch of the previous round. So for rounds 21 through 24, we're going to do the same thing we did for round 20. We're going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. And at the end of the round, we're going to do a join like we just did with the, we're going to join the last stitch to the first stitch with a slip stitch. So there should be no changing of row, uh, stitch counts. You should still have 48 stitches at the end of every round. And again, don't hesitate to use that stitch marker if you find it's going to be helpful. So if you'd like to pause your video, meet me back here before you do your last stitch of row 24. I will meet you back here and I'll show you what we're doing at the end of row, uh, round 24 for that last stitch before we move on to round 25. So I just finished my last stitch of row 24 and I'm ready to do my slip stitch join at the end of the round. But I need to change to my new color before moving on to round 25. Now, if you'd prefer, you can do your yarn, your color change with the last yarn over and the last stitch, the last single crochet of that round. However, I do have a pr preference that um, I join my color in the slip stitch here only because I find it a little cleaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook into that last stitch there, and then I'm going to bring in my new color, place it over my hook. I'm going to pull it through the stitch and through the uh, yarn on my hook. Now, when I pull those yarn tails tight, you shouldn't see too much of the uh, new color. You'll that darker color will create that slip stitch uh, across, and it's a little bit of a cleaner join. So now that I've got my new color attached, I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. And now I'm going to place, I'm going to single crochet once into each stitch around. And at the end of this round, I'm going to do a slip stitch join, joining the last stitch to the first stitch with a slip stitch. At the end of round 25, you can finish off and weave in your ends, and then we'll be ready to move on to the sleeves. So if you'd like to pause your video and do round 25 and one single crochet in each stitch round, joining with a slip stitch at the end, I will meet you back here when we're ready to move on to the sleeves. So now that we have our the body of our dress completed, we are ready to move on to adding the sleeves to our dress. Now to start with your sleeves, you need to have the right side of the fabric facing you. Now I've had some requests for people to kind of give you some tips on how to tell if it's the right side or not. So the odd numbered rows, the right side of the fabric should be facing you. So um, if you're looking at the bottom of your dress, the color change, these should look like little V's along the bottom. If it looks like 
this on the bottom, that is the wrong side. Okay. And the buttonholes should be on the right side of your fabric, right? The right hand side. If they're on the left hand side, then you've got your fabric inside out. Okay. So I hope that that helps. And we're getting ready to join our yarn in the armhole that we created here at the top of the garment. Now we're going to at attach our darker color. You can go ahead and use the lighter color if that's your preference. Um, but the we will be using the darker color here. And we're going to find the center point of the bottom of your armhole. So there's no real exact science here. I just kind of take a look and measure visually the points between here and here and try to find the center point. And then you're going to insert your hook through your fabric there. There are these back loops that you can to it attach to. If you're finding that those are too big or you're, you're struggling to find them, don't, you can go ahead and go through the base of that single crochet that's in that stitch as well, which will help it be a little bit more secure. And it's frankly just a little easier to grab onto. So we're going to attach our yarn to this point here with a slip stitch. So we've pulled our yarn through the hole and we're going to chain up one. And now we're going to place 19 single crochets around this armhole. And I'm going to do my best to make this um, easy for you to see here, but it is a relatively a small hole. So just bear with me here. Uh, again, this is not an exact science. You just essentially want to place 19 single crochets as evenly as possible around the hole. And so I'm going to work into that same stitch that we joined and I'm going to single crochet and I'm going to find the next stitch there and I'm going to single crochet all the way around. Now I'm going to place one here between the two rows. There's a little bit of a gap there, so that helps. There's four. Now I'm going to turn my work and I'm working. You can see we actually have the, the proper stitches here. So these are pretty easy placements for, for us to work into. So we've got four, five. So we're at 14. And then we're going to place one here in the side. And then turning my work, I can see that I've got four more loops here that I can work into. And that is our 19 stitches. Okay. And so it should look like this at this point. And we're going to join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch join. So again, working into that stitch first stitch of the round, yarn over, pull up the loop, and then pull that through the loop on your hook. Again, I'm going to bring in that stitch marker and place that into what was the first stitch of the round and mark that here so I don't lose or pick up any additional stitches. So then I'm ready to move on to round two and I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. And now we're going to single crochet in the first eight stitches. And now we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So that's those two single crochets done in the same stitch. And now we'll single crochet into each of the remaining 10 stitches. Now you'll notice that we're going to be doing an increase in every other row that we'll be doing for the sleeves. And the reason we're doing that is because that's um, increasing every other row actually will create a bell sleeve shape and cause the uh, sleeve to flare out as we move closer to the cuff. Right, now that I've done my 10 single crochets, I'm going to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. I'll chain up one. And then I'm just going to quickly place my stitch marker here and I'm ready for round three. I'm going to turn my work 
And then for round three, we're just going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. Because of the increase in the previous round, we should have 20 single crochet stitches at the end of this round. So if you'd like to pause your video and come back to me when you're ready to start with, uh, to end off round three and move on to round four, I'll meet you here at the end of round three. So I just finished my last stitch of round three, and I'm going to do a slip stitch join from my last stitch to my first stitch. And then I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. There we go. And now I'm ready to start with round four. For round four, we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first nine stitches. And now that we have our nine single crochets, I'm going to place a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So again, that's those two single crochets done in the same stitch. And then we're going to place one single crochet into each of the remaining 10 stitches. At the end of the round, we will join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. If you'd like to pause your video, meet me back here for uh, round five. I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I just did my join at the end of round four and I'm ready to move on to round five. So I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. For round five, we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. At the end of the round, you should have 21 single crochet stitches. And then you're going to join your last stitch to your first stitch with a slip stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video here and place one single crochet into each stitch around and join at the end, I'll meet you back here when we're ready to move on to round six. So I just finished my slip stitch join at the end of round five and I'm ready to move on to round six. To do that, I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. To start round six, we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first 10 stitches. And now we'll place a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And just a reminder, that's two single crochets in the same stitch. And then we'll place one single crochet into each of the remaining 10 stitches. At the end of this round, we'll join our last stitch to the first stitch with a slip stitch. And you should have 22 single crochets at the end of this round. If you'd like to pause your video, meet me back here when we're ready to move on to round seven. I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm ready to move on to round seven and to start, I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. For row seven, we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. We should still have 22 single crochet stitches at the end of this round. And when we get to the end of the round, we will join with a slip stitch. So pause your video and do one single crochet in each stitch around and I'll meet you back here when we're ready to move on to uh, round eight. So I am ready to move on to round eight now and to start I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. And to start with round eight, we're going to place one single crochet into each of the first 11 stitches. Now that I have my 11 single crochets done, I'm going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now I will place one single crochet into each of the remaining 10 stitches. At the end of this round, we will join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch, but we will be changing our colors. So I will show you how to do that in just a moment. So I just did my last stitch of round eight and I'm about to do my slip stitch join. To do that, I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch of the round, and then I'm going to bring in my new color. All right, I'm just going to lay that over the hook and pull that through the first stitch and through the yarn on my hook. Okay, and then I'm going to pull the tails tight there and I'm ready to move on to round nine. So to start round nine, I'm going to chain up one and turn my work. And now to uh, do round nine, we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. And this is going to create the trim of our sleeve. At the end of this round, you'll join your last stitch to your first stitch with a slip stitch. And then you can finish off for this part of the project 
once you've done that slip stitch. So I just did the join for round nine with my slip stitch and I'm going to cut my yarn leaving a few inches of tail to weave in my ends and then I'm just going to pull that yarn through the slip stitch and pull it tight and then you can just weave in your ends. You'll need to repeat the instructions for this sleeve in the exact same way on the second armhole and then when you're done that you'll need to get your uh, needle and thread and your buttons and sew the buttons onto the back of your dress across from your buttonholes. So to do that, fold your dress in half. It's a little tricky when you have the sleeve there. <laughs> I like to fold them forward like this and then just lay your garment together like so. Find the place where the buttonhole will cover the opposite side of the fabric and sew your button in place. Weave in the rest of your ends and that's the that's it. That's how you make your bell sleeve doll dress. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. If you enjoy free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylamb.com. Thanks so much for watching friends. Happy hooking and I'll see you next time.